Father, we thank you for this new day. As we begin this new day, we entrust each one of us into your hands. Melt us, mold us, break us and fashion us, Lord, as per your designs. May we be willingly surrender ourselves into your presence, Lord. We shall say this prayer together, peace within. May today there be peace within. May I trust God that I am exactly where I am meant to be. May I not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May I use these gifts that I have received and pass on the love that has been given to me. May I be confident knowing I am a child of God. Let this presence settle into my bones and allow my soul the freedom to sing, meditate, praise and love. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for it will not be done. O most sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. O most sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. O most sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. Saint Augustine, Saint Philip Neri, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. How did the not the night? How did yesterday go? Your prayer reflection is it really working? If it is working, you must be disturbed. No one is disturbed. Everyone seems to be very happy. And Philip Neri so beautifully speaks about it. He say he was known as today is the feast of Saint Philip Neri. He was known as the most cheerful saint, a humorous saint. He was who kept laughing throughout his life and made others also to laugh. And that's the greatest virtue. And he would say this: a cheerful and glad spirit attains to perfection much more readily than a melancholy spirit. 
reflect on it. So, we continue from where we have stopped yesterday. Before that, the response for almost the sacred heart of Jesus is not pray for us. I trust in you. It is to the sacred heart of Jesus. So, uh, just a recap of what so far we have been talking yesterday. Okay. We said God must become an experience for us much more than anything else. God becoming an experience, no more a knowledge, but a relationship. It is not that I know something about Jesus as I know something about Mahatma Gandhi or Jawaharlal Nehru. It is much more than that a relationship is built because he is alive. He has promised me that he will be with me. And it is he who called me. And it is I who respond to the call that he gave me. So there has to be not just the facts and informations, but more than that, a relationship that I build with my God. For which I need to look not into any documents, but into myself. My, and that's where we call it experience. I must look within to find the moments that I encountered God. Oftentimes, you know, our failure is God is very much visible and present in our lives. In each one of our personal life, God is visibly present. But problem with us is, we do not spend our time to reflect back and say, yes, it was the Lord. Sometimes we can have some fantasy and create a fantasy and say, it was God who did it. It is not that. Listening to your heart, hearing the voice of the Lord speaking. Uh, last December, I, as every month I go for recollections, I went to many religious houses for recollections. And I told them, I have been speaking to you for months and years now. Today I will only say three words. The rest is up to you how you spent your advent. I said the Lord speaks to you. Hear his voice. Hear his voice. The second word is listen to that voice. Third one was surrender to that voice. These two are possible only if the first one has happened, that you heard him speaking. And then I came away. And uh, I remember two of them complained afterwards, Father, we thought of uh, you will be speaking to us one hour and in five minutes you finished and went. I said, uh, I felt uh, God should speak to you, then I speak to you. And then after the next month in January again I went into all these communities. So I repeated these questions to them. Did you hear his voice? Surprisingly, almost 80% of them said, no, Father. And they have reasons. Reasons is simple. Uh, you know, um, I, this reason I have made out myself. Because I was watching, uh, as a person from outside, watching, there were communities where some of them who said, yes, Father, we heard the Lord speaking, were communities uh, where they do not have so many activities, either a novitiate house or a formation house, where prayer was given very much importance. The other communities where lots of activities take place, it's not a mistake, okay, do not mistake me that activities are wrong. What I'm trying to say is, they were so busy throughout that entire Advent season, they didn't hear that voice. As that's what I was telling you yesterday, Speaker, if you don't put off, you don't hear the Lord speaking. And uh, those who heard, they told me, yes, Father, we heard. And the same thing I did it in our seminary also. In the seminary also, I told them, hear him when he speaks to you. And at the end, I was d disappointed. To tell you the fact, I was disappointed because almost 90% of all the people whom I spoke, they were not people who heard. But to my consolation, that same month was Father Benny's birthday. And we had one family, they are uh, uh, a couple from Africa, settled here in Bangalore. They come for Mass every day. And they do not know what I have told these students. And that evening, since they were there for the Mass, I said, join us for the dinner. 
So they came for the dinner and then this uh, lady stood up and asked me, Father, can I say a few words? I thought she wanted to appreciate Father Benny for all the work that he is doing. I said, yes, please. And she stood up and she had nothing to speak about birthday. Instead, she said, brothers, your chapel is a very special place. God speaks there. And I heard him speaking. I know I am on record. I am telling you this. Because this was an experience which I never told her. But she says, I heard the Lord talking to me here in this chapel. That was a beautiful experience. And then afterwards I was asking our students, did you hear, does it work? And they said, yes, Father. That really changes them. The students next to the onwards try to at least spend some time listening to the Lord. The Lord speaks. He speaks distinctively to us. You can hear his voice. Believe me, try to do that. Problem is, we do not spend our time in faith to listen to him. So, that's what I'm trying to tell you. This becomes an experience. Anything that happened in our life, we must be able to see in the light and then transform them as an experience and an encounter with God. That is what a retreat must help us into. Two things. One is to communicate with God and one is to look back into my past and see the places where God entered into my life in concrete moments of my life and then helped me, supported me. This help and support does not mean, as I was telling you yesterday, having prosperity or having an achievement. Notice in your life, when was the time that you came closer to God? When was the last time that you came very close to God? You don't have to answer. The answer most probably will be the most painful moments of your life. Either you had lost somebody in your family, someone was sick, or you yourself was in a trouble. There was some misunderstanding. There were some troubles coming. Yes or no? Also, we had so many, so many hypes in life, so many success in our life. Take them also. Maybe passing in an exam, getting a good mark or completing an interview or else getting an appointment that you desired or working in a field which you really wanted, etc. But did that really bring you closer to God or the other one brought you closer to God? Those painful moments that are the crosses the Lord would ask us to carry also. Because that will bring us closer to God. And that experience is what we call it the moments of God's grace in our life. The Lord really present in us. And then I said, write them, all of you who are still willing to write. If you do not find time to write, reflect them. Okay, write them or reflect them. Then, only see, when you do all this only, you will feel the need only then a desire emerges. As I was telling you yesterday, a desire for God must emerge in us. You know, in the morning, we had a beautiful morning hymn. No? We all prayed. Beautifully you sung. Anyone remembers what did we pray in that? That's a nice guess, but it was not true. The morning hymn. Now that. Continue the rest. Even if not the whole words. What did we pray for? There were four stanzas with four beautiful invocations. Asking the Lord. Okay. Now. What I want you, I wish you to do is, when you go back, take this and read once again. Slowly, don't sing. Read them. Read slowly and see how that really changes you. How that really works in you. How meaningful that hymn is. 
we have been saying this hymn for years and years some of this sometimes will strike us but most of them go unnoticed even the words sometimes what we say goes unnoticed how many of us seriously say when for example one of the most beautiful invocation during the mass is lord i am not worthy to receive you but you say a word and i shall be healed how beautiful that is how many of us become conscious when we say this that happens when all these process happens in us that i realize my unworthiness i realize my failures i realize that before him i am no one i am nothing before him and that humility from that humility begins that prayer so and then you communicate with him only when these steps happen you will be able to communicate with him he becomes my treasure for which i can give up my whole being if not it doesn't make any sense it will not make any sense unless if we realize this and then i gave you two passages okay you might be wondering what is this picture that i have given there this is yesterday i was telling you those of you who did not believe me what i said this was yesterday i downloaded from my whatsapp one message one sister sent me after we had a retreat with them on 2nd 2021 may 2nd to 10th 21 that is 8 days of retreat look at the meticulous way she wrote down the time that she spent before the lord and i told them don't write it down just for an account sake but for an experience sake and at the end she writes a total 65 hours i spent before the lord thanks be to god amen that will remain that will remain with you with you forever the information that i give you will remain in your book but the time that you spent before the lord will remain with you forever and that really helps you and uh, it's not first time i have like this a, a good number of balance sheets if you want i can give it to you a good number of them and uh, all those who did in the first year they found it in the beginning little difficult but as the time goes by i see this is my fourth year i continuously do a retreat for them and all these years the numbers are only increasing never decreasing they find the joy in being in the company of the lord and that we need to experience once when you experience it you will understand what i'm talking about otherwise it it looks simply like a, an arithmetic problem that we can never solve okay so from there we we continue that's what so far yesterday we saw and today we call it i know i call this retreat also an apostles retreat an apostles retreat is because who is an apostle an apostle is somebody is not simply a follower then who is a disciple what's the difference between a disciple and an apostle one who knows the master even a disciple knows the master no okay the chosen ones they were specially selected that is one character second one they are also given a special task they are given a special work and that is what makes a person special before the lord you are chosen by him not just you are chosen but you are also given a a task a commission you have been given a commission by the lord and that is what makes an apostles so in the strict sense they were only 12 isn't it there were 12 of them and uh, later on we see when you read acts of the apostles and uh, pauline epistles you find uh, many others also were called uh, apostles barnabas was called apostles john mark was called apostles timothy was called apostles so similarly many of them and in the early church communities when you look early church fathers many of them addressed others as apostles 
So they were all apostles, and Ignatius of Antioch was called rightly by many as an apostle who came to Rome. So in other words, an apostle, what makes the apostleship is that you are called by God and you are given a task, a commission. Now, in that sense, in a general sense, do you fit into an apostle's category? Yes, certainly, certainly, because God called, called each one of you and including me, God called us. It is his call. So we are called and set apart by him. And then have we given a mission, a commission? Who gave you this commission? When did he give you this commission? We will come back into that. We will come back into that later. Now, in other words, this is what makes us an apostle, isn't it? An apostle had also another beautiful criteria. Uh, I'll give you an uh, example. The best example is in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 20 onwards, when you read, Paul, uh, sorry, Peter, standing at the council, and then he speaks, and he says, uh, we, the Lord initially selected 12 of us, and one of us betrayed the Lord and he committed suicide. We know Judas, isn't it? Now, the Lord wanted us to be 12. We are only 11. Now we should elect a, a 12th one. They elected the 12th one. You remember? Recently we celebrated his feast also. <laughs> Matthias. What were the criteria for selecting Matthias? He was? I am not listening to sister because I spoke to her before. Hmm. So, Matthias was going along with the? How do we know that? Where do you find that one in the Bible? I did not find. Says uh, Matthias went with the disciples. In my Bible, it is not there. I don't know if you have a Bible in which it's there. may be true. <laughs> but the, 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 your answer is correct, sister. Your answer is correct. Yes? So, yes, exactly. See, this is what the, the requisite was. That somebody who lived with Christ beginning from Galilee until his death. Someone who followed him. That was the first criteria. Somebody who followed him beginning from Galilee, that is where he begins his public ministry. From, in other words, someone who accompanied him throughout his public ministry and who saw. And secondly, the second criteria. All of us are accepted by God. No? No one is rejected by God. Even if I am a sinner, God accepts me. People. Even if I am not accepted by people, God selects us. No? There were many in the history. That has to be the foundation. Sister Shanti, now you can say. See, I had told them once in one recollection, I remember this. The most important thing that it is. This has to be our foundation also. One who witnessed the resurrection of Christ. Why is it so important? Exactly. Without believing in that resurrection, how will you ever live a life comfortable outside and come and take your cross denying yourself and follow the Lord. The guarantee is only this, that Christ resurrected and I will also resurrect one day. And on the day of resurrection, the Lord will reward me for the life that I lived worthy of his calling. And that is why. That's a very simple thing. So, and why do you think Peter wanted 
Peter wanted these two experiences. think okay cuz afterwards you used to continue your thinking why do you think peter says that uh, somebody should be someone one whom we select should be somebody who has uh, witnessed the life of christ because i thought you know it's nice that i ask you to to make you think also little than giving you informations then only very good sister continue exactly exactly then only the beautiful correct word would be witness christ you can witness only what you see what you experience how can you witness something which you have not seen and just tes- you know testify it correct no only what you see you can tell the other person that i saw it i experienced it i believe in it if you want you believe in it and that's possible only my dear sisters when we have this experience so this is what jesus wanted them this is what apostles early time wanted that to have you know witnessing christ is not simply downloading something from the net and speaking to somebody or reading it from somewhere and speaking this is what i said i was telling you witnessing is testifying you know making a testimony of yourself and today why the church still do not grow in india is simply because of this lack of witnessing lack of testimony which we had which we had early time maybe in the first century and second century and for 15th century 14 later half of 15th and 16th century we had great people like of like um, saint francis uh, uh, savior who came to india saint john de brito people like them they were witnesses and then many others followed many maybe in your own early missions if you remember the early missions that came to india look at that intensity that witnessing do we have that witnessing today no the fact is we do not have that kind of witnessing that we had at that time what do we witness that is each one of us to to reflect so finding a you know, some we become a part of the, an institutionalized growth but each one is responsible for his own way to that uh, promise of christ So what I'm trying to tell you is unless we witness Christ we can't proclaim or we can't give a testimony of Christ it's simply like for example I am only somebody who hears I'll give you a simple example two of them are fighting at each other okay they were fighting they were fighting here and none of you were here and then I saw they were fighting here So the provincial asks what happened one has got a bruise here one has cut here one has scratch here what happened you all will say you don't know i will say i saw this one is hitting her also i can tell another few of them and i say you know i saw they were fighting there a police inform sister when they go they will not say they saw them fighting what will they say father told us they were fight you understand you are only giving a report of what you heard not what you saw and today what we really need is this that we speak of what we see and i will tell you of that maybe as we continue in the session or the afternoon session the apostles considered to be the greatest importance in their life that they be people who have seen god saint peter when he speaks about he would say i'm talking about something that i have seen with my own eyes i heard it with my own ears of which i'm talking to you saint paul would say saint john so beautifully would say even i have felt it with my own hands of which i'm talking to you so they were people who testified their experience of encountering christ 
with a personal relationship with Christ and the Christ is present even to us only it is a glorified body of Christ but this Christ is very much visible in our communities in our congregations a congregation like uh, yours and mine if that has lasted uh, a test of time for our centuries certainly there is the work of the spirit there is the guidance and protection of the holy spirit and the lord himself uh, watches over it but do we understand or else each one of us imagine this simple this miniature of a church itself see each one of us come from different parts of our country without uh, knowing each other without the understanding one another but we are here today living together that itself is a greatest sign of god's call god's unification of different kinds of people so all this must really help us in understanding and that is why i call it an apostles retreat because each one of us are called so today in your meditations what you should be able to understand must be this your original call that came from the lord and the commandment or the commission the lord gave you to go and proclaim you can't proclaim something that you haven't experienced so we have to make an attempt to experience this christ that tomorrow when you tell somebody they listen to you what people listen to you is not your stories they may listen to your stories it will be forgotten but when they when you talk to them with a conviction and conviction can come only with the, an experience direct contact with god and that's what i'm talking about so what sense does a retreat make for us it's simply the most apostolic or religious thing an apostle or religious can do nothing more necessary for a sile sincere seeker to withdraw to a desert and spend prolonged hours in listening and not talking that's the most beautiful thing this is what the lord also would ask us psalm 63 one says like this o god you are my god i shall seek you earnestly my soul thirsts for you my flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water that must be our our thirst for him as as i was telling you yesterday there has to be that desire for him so intense that i gasp for breath i must also desire for him then you will experience him so that's what we must do so in a prayer one presents himself or herself before god so that god may give him or her what he wishes to give him or her to give it to the others in other words god will give you what you should give it to the other the gift nature of god's gift is always this it is not something that he give it to you put it in your pocket and your bag or keep it in your cupboard sometimes this is what we do and uh, you know when i was asking you about uh, uh, easter have you spoken about resurrected christ we put him into our pockets and went into our own rooms finished an event is over we wait for the next event these experiences that i have in my personal encounter i must be able to share with one another at the table how many of us at the table after a morning prayer go to the table and sit and say sister you know today morning i had a beautiful experience of god encounter i felt him talking to me last night i was reading the bible i felt a really a light entering into me st philip neri is known for recording you know many of the saints in the past if you take there were people st philip neri finally would say he felt there is a bulge in his heart there was a, a bowl of fire that went inside of him and then people testifies later on from then onwards there was this love was quite a burning sensation for him it was even when he was standing next to us and talking to us we felt so and that this kind of experiences are what we need to share with one another when a candidate come when a postulant come when a novice is formed 
what you really need to talk to them is your personal god encounter your god experience not much of the theories not much of our uh, uh, you know we have unfortunately today so many theories of formations but which sometimes may not help us in our uh, growth in our understanding what really would help us is only this that i am called to witness and this witnessing i share with you what do you do your witnessing your experience you share with this many of you and imagine how the church uh, flourish the early christian community single handedly paul peter and few other apostles 12 of them look at the way it uh, grew faster and faster it took only hardly 20 years to this church from the middle east to reach to rome and then to reach to the east and to the west it took almost of hardly 100 years from then onwards it is still in its such stagnant position unless until you no know, few great missionaries continue this work so at that retreat as i was telling you do not look for informations to be written down but rather transformation this was a nice term i i use it from um, anthony de mello when his retreat when he begins his first sentence always used to be this he would say do not look for information at retreats look for transformation and uh, that will really help us go to your room close the door and pray to your father who is with you in secret that's what the lord also would say in uh, matthew 66 go to your room close the door and pray to your father who is with you in secret you know what does st augustine speak about this it's your patron st augustine would interpret this saying like this the room is the heart the door are your senses now close your senses close the door of your heart and then you will enter into a communication with him to understand our own identity paul would give a beautiful understanding of his own identity in chapter 1 romans 1 a simple one sentence look at the way he would reuse the adjective to describe who he is he says i paul a servant some translation also read as a slave of jesus christ called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of god he calls himself a servant he feels that he is called called to be an apostle i miss and then if i am called to be an apostle i am also set apart i you see each one of us were set apart from our families called from out of this family to a new place for the gospel of god this must be our own identity also that each one of us feels that i am special because i am created in the image and likeness of god like the others but what is the difference from the other and me this that i become a servant of god the moment i am called not just a servant of god but i how do i become a servant of god because i am called i am not called by anybody else sometime you know we do not understand this fact uh, that i am called by so you ask somebody did someone each one of us you know you ask this question to yourself who called you to the agustinian convent how do you know this you you go further okay develop this theme in your meditations how do we know at the end you know i is, i do not want to ask so many questions as this is an on record otherwise you go to yourself and ask yourself many of them at the end get fed up and tell me father i was called by one sister sister came for vocation promotion i came with her over it can happen it it can happen in that way as long as we don't really father 
understand and this purification of intention takes place there has to be see you can enter into a convent or a seminary for various reasons and purposes i had a spiritual director a priest who told me he joined in the seminary to learn english he joined in the convent seminary to learn english after the first year of his studies he goes to the rector and says father look at his sincerity also father i came to learn english now i have learned a bit of english now can i go father looks at him and smiles and then he says you still speak broken english you came to learn english why don't you learn it properly and go so he said okay that's a good idea father gave him permission also he went for holidays he came back after holidays because he had all the more courage because now he is no more hidden he is all the more free but then he started seriously studying english at the end of the year again he went to the same rector and said father everybody is going for holidays can i also pack my bag because you had told me to learn english now somewhat better i can speak english then he said one problem is there now no yes what father he said you are doing your plus 1 no he said yes now what about your plus 2 you go back to your home you will lose this one year and the previous year and you will redo the whole thing there instead why don't you finish your plus 2 and go i give you permission and then you all laugh no then he told me the next sentence is was very interesting he said subhash 37 years have passed after that i never felt like going home god calls you and you may feel initially with a different compulsions inside of you but these prayers these sacraments that you participate and this community living this grace that is sanctifying grace and habitual grace that falls in you slowly purifies your intention it purifies your intention childhood i wanted to become a priest and the purpose of me becoming priest was i was fascinated by our parish priest the way he was talking i used to imitate him he used to carry some keys and walk around with making a sound i also somewhere some keys old keys here and there i used to carry and walk around and all the more what really fascinated me was i saw my father who was a tall and well built man only standing with all humility and reverence and respect before one person that was a parish priest he would stand like this a lamp i thought oh, such a powerful person this priest is why not i should become one that's a seed growing in you at that age that is sufficient in that age i will not know called a parcel servant all this but then that is how god puts that seed inside of you but then god also nurtures it with the sacrament that he gives it to you this must happen with each one of us as we grow of course you are convinced of your vocation and that is why you are here but this conviction must grow deeper and deeper and deeper and then your voice changes your testimony changes your witnessing changes there comes power there comes grace and every time there will be a confidence when you raise your hands and bless somebody true try to do that if somebody tells you to lift your hand and pray over them maybe the senior sisters many of you might be doing how many of you will do that maybe in some places there is a culture a part of the culture that is others why don't you do it doesn't this sacramental life that you are living give you the confidence grace power because we ourselves are not convinced it's not only you uh, it is sometimes even ourselves see i have a lot of troubles i had even now also i have not that i i do not have we continue our encountering christ in that way remember last uh, uh, lent season um i go during the lent to, to different parishes here to for a lenten recollections every year i go to one particular parish and there was an elderly lady who comes regularly and then she after coming here she would ask me father next sunday where are you going 
and she will be sure enough there. And she comes to along with me to three or four parishes where I go. And uh, very devoted, very devoted woman. But that day she told me, after immediately as I finished Mass, she said, Father, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, attend your talk today because yesterday my BP was down, my cholesterol was down, and uh, uh, the doctor told me I need to be on the bed rather than sitting. I feel a bit uh, heavy also, so I'm going back. But you pray, Father. If you pray, I will be healed. I was really doubting. Now, you see, I, if I pray and if she is not healed, her impression on me will change. That is how, you see, we logically think. But then I prayed. But my prayer was, I put it a little cleverly. I said, Lord, not with my faith, with her faith, may she be healed. And then her son came, took her home. After 10 minutes, she calls me and says, Father, please tell my son to come and take me. I'm totally all right. I have no problem. And she came and stood. In the entire retreat, she was there sitting in front. And I believe in that prayer. That prayers really work in us. But problem with us, are we really connecting ourselves with this understanding, this link that I am not doing it simply because God called me to do it. It is he who called me. That conviction must be there in your life. Anything that you do, you should have this conviction and a deep faith that if the Lord who called me is powerful and he will do it. This is what St. Paul says in his letter to the Thessalonians. The one who called you is faithful and he will do it. Only problem with us is we try to do it what he should do. We stop doing, ask him to do and then things will change. Do you follow what I am saying? Yes? Are you convinced? Be convinced. So, he would speak about this, uh, this I will leave it for you to reflect. The master, he says, I am a servant. If I am a servant, I have a master who is responsible. The slave is interested in the master's affairs. These are the two things when you call us him a master or I say I am a servant. If uh, we have servants here, are you not, suppose if one of the servant falls so sick, are you not responsible? Will you not take them to the hospital? Those of you who are in charge of your staff here. You see, if they are sick, what will you do? You take care. You take them to the hospital. Similarly, if I am sick, why should I worry? I have the greatest doctor. He may call me also on the process of treatment. But if that is his will, then let that also be done. That's how we must be able to approach. Similarly, if the master is responsible, I am also interested in the master's affairs. So this is give and take. There has to be this relationship. The master is interested in me. He takes care of me in my sickness. He gives me health and well-being. So I am also responsible towards what he has called me for. It is the same a servant relationship in your own staff you look at. If they are very good, if they are faithful, how well you take care. But the Lord does not do that distinction. No? Even if I am an unfaithful servant, he will continue to serve me faithfully. We too are accountable and answerable to the master for all that we do. A slave should do his master's job. Are we doing this? Are our business the business of Christ? We are to be involved in the business of the master. It is not coincidence that you are here. It is God's plan. This is what we must be able to understand also. And ask ourselves, am I really doing? Now, as I told you yesterday, you maybe our answer will be, yes, I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm early morning getting up, going to the chapel, praying, meditating, participating in the mass, and then doing some little work. Do not think by sitting before the Lord, you are doing a favor to the Lord. No. The Lord wanted you to be his hands, to work for him. Pope John Paul would second, you know, you see, before that. However, one can lose this if not responded to this call. John 15, 16, yesterday we were reflecting on this. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. The initiative is from God. God initiated, but then I need to respond. 
John Paul II says, every vocation is a gift and also a mystery built on trust. We are called for a special purpose. So we need not theoretically to understand this. You must be sitting before the Lord and try to understand what is the special purpose for which God called me. Do you have an answer? Find an answer from the Lord. Mark 3, 13, 15 says, He went up onto the mountain and called to him those whom he desired or whom he loved. And they came to him. And he appointed twelve. And the purpose is given to be with him and to be sent out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. In other words, he called whom he wanted or whom he desired. So if you are here, not because you are the best, I always think in my family, if I look, I was the least of all we five children in studies, in every activities. They were far better than me. But why did God call me? I don't know. But he called me. That is enough. He called me. Not because you are worthy, he calls you. He does not call the strong. He calls the weak and strengthens them with his call. So the call is what makes you strong. And problem with us is we theoretically study, I am called. But are you convinced when was that call came into your life? Or was there a gradual process in my conviction and in my faith building? Look at even the apostles. Our problem today is we all have sufficient faith. No? Yes or no? No, I don't have. Okay, you may have. I don't have. As the apostles had... Even the apostles after being with the Lord three years, what was their prayer? Lord, increase my faith. Increase my faith. Thomas, even after three years, he says, unless I put my hand, I will not believe. Being with the Lord, just like this, face to face, talking, not a glorified form of body of Christ. They saw miraculous Lazarus getting up after two days of his death. They saw Jairus' daughter being healed. Say the paralytic man taking his coat and walking. They saw the blind man who simply opened his eyes and uh, danced there and went. They saw all this. Yet they said, Lord, increase our faith. Our problem is our faith is already set. Yeah. So they say, and I asked you, do you have sufficient faith? They said, yes, we have. Our faith is limited. We only need to ask the Lord, Lord, increase my faith in moments of difficulties, in moments of struggles. I need to have a faith that really goes deeper. If you have this faith, you know, half of our problems will be solved. I'll come back into that later. He called whom he loved. The call is to be with him. The primary concern is to remain in him. The greatest gift God can ever give is this. Jeremiah, you see, in his call, Jeremiah 1, 4 to 10, he says like this. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. And I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then look at the Jeremiah's response. Our Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I sent you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched his, my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. God takes the initiative. Look at the way God calls. Does this encounter happen? Have you ever gone to the Lord and said, Lord, I am not able to do what you tell me to do? No. Because we are capable of doing. No. God has not done his beard. 
God has not done his, uh, 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 what do you call it, nursing. God has not done uh, what I have done. I have qualifications. I'll give you a beautiful example. Uh, St. Mark records this. Jesus, coming down from the mountain, he tells, come let us go to the other side of the river. You heard this, no? This passage. Come let us go to the other side of the river. And uh, what happened next? The next sentence itself is very interesting. The next sentence says, And the apostles took Jesus to the other side. Who took whom? Who called whom? Jesus called. It's simply, I'll put it in another words. I invite sister, I tell sister, Come, let's go to Barnabite Vidya Bhavan, Barnabite Father's house. The next sentence must be, Father took sister to the house. Correct. Not that sister took father to his house. Was it a mistake? No. What is really Mark trying to tell us? And why did the apostles do that? Exactly. Jesus, who was he? What was his profession? Even now, he is not being revealed totally for them. Okay, they are also slowly understanding him. After all, the son of a carpenter. What will a carpenter know? The sea and river, the wind, the depth, the water, the troubled waters. They will not know. He will not know. But who are the apostles? Fishermen, born and brought up by the sea. And they knew everything so well. So, they take him. Come, we will take you. It is our responsibility to take the Lord to the other side. And uh, not only that, the second, again, it's all the more interesting. What was he doing when there was a storm? He was sleeping with a cushion. Which means they also offered him a cushion and said, you take care, you sleep. We will take you to the other side. It's our business to take you to the other side. And then you do what you want. But they allowed him to sleep there. And then he slept at the mass happily. And there was the storm. There was the water troubled. And then the apostles cry. And what was their cry? Lord save us, you are sleeping. We are perishing here. Who put the Lord into sleep? The apostles. Put that into your own life and see. How often do we put our Lord into sleep because of our confidence, our complacency? How often before going to a hospital, you pray to the Lord and say, Lord, I do not know to give an injection. I do not know if this medicine will work. I do not know how to teach the small children. You teach me. You teach for me. That part does not come into us. We are confident. The more confident we are, the more danger we enter. Modern psychology will tell you, be confident. But in spirituality, I would suggest to you, confidence must come with the companionship with God. Your confidence must come with the companionship with God. You are confident because the Lord will do it for me. Not that I will do it. Not that I am capable of doing. I will never be a capable person to do it by myself. Because these are something that need to be transforming the other person. That spirit needs to be there. Formation. We have uh, uh, in India much more than the formies today have the number of courses. If we have 2,000 formies all over India, 2,500 types of courses we have on for, for formators. And they are all the more worried how to form. We will not be able to. It's only what we need is just sit before them and look at the blessed sacraments. Oh Lord, fashion them, mold them as you mold me. See, that would become the greatest of witnessing. Otherwise, sometimes we contradict. And then that really brings down. See, many of them very easily give us an answer. Why no vocations in our own houses? We are very happy with a beautiful answer. You know, Father, these days families are nuclear families. If only one child for a father's, one child in the family. The child does not come. 
so we have reduced the vocations vocations are only in some areas now father other place is not there much more than that we fail in witnessing we failed in witnessing that's a fact looking at how many of our faces will a child feel like coming to us with a grumpy face with a big eyes we look at them and scare them and we are not very joyful people sometimes in our life i'm not talking particularly to anybody here please do not misunderstand me look at the religious contact today now today it is changing the youngsters are more of smiling and laughter there is dance there is singing today you find so much but for past few years maybe take some 10 years back i never saw my parish priest smiling at me we never see we never saw many sisters smiling because it was a part of modesty it's not that they did not want it was a past of part of their modesty but today it is slowly changing but unfortunately as it is changing we have got a mask on it so the most important thing is this smile come into us you know when when i am content with my life when you are content and happy with your life a smile you don't have to force it upon you it simply comes into us grace in our religious life simply mean contentment in the life that we have taken and that life simply will decorate you with a smile and grace enough you don't need a fair and lovely and pond powders you simply need to be before the lord you simply need to be before the lord and the lord will give us this that's a beauty and that will be our confidence also that will remain a confidence so i'll conclude so in other words this is what we really are called to do to renew ourselves returning to the lord to reinterpret the spirit according to that i mean see the lord himself would speak about this matthew 16:3 you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky you are very good at it but you cannot interpret the signs of the time Luke twelve fifty six again. You hypocrites! There he would go a little more harsh to them. You are hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but you do not know how to interpret the present time. Interpreting the present time is not the work of somebody else in our life. In our own life, we need to interpret. we need to experience and that experience we must be able to write them down or else to speak to somebody and that is what the signs of the time how do you for example how do you interpret uh, uh, this uh, onslaught of corona in the light of your faith i was asking to a group of the kotalango sisters on their feast day they were asking me to give a talk online and then i was asking them has corona done anything good to you than thinking of negatives and they looked sometime no father it only created a lot of fear a lot of anxieties and uh, very difficult we have closed down the school we have closed down our physiotherapy etc has a pandemic done anything good to your founder i asked them oh really and then they slowly look back into their history yes in the time of cholera that was spreading so fast he moves from turin all the way to the outskirts because of cholera and that is what really gave him a kind of spirit within himself to bring out to help a hospital for these people who are suffering and that's where the name came the little house of divine providence and there all their convents are known as little house of divine providence where did it come it came from adversities look into the church also when whenever the church grew it was only in adversities if i start speaking about that and whole day i can speak about and giving you insights and examples to say the church grew in times of what i'm speaking about church growth is never prosperity never buildings never institutions i'm talking about faith belief trust conviction in christ okay so i conclude with this it is to draw strength and inspiration so our retreat is for this to meet the source to deepen our relation with him anything you want to add anything you want to subtract 
Oh, very silent, very nice. Talking to the sisters is very easy. They'll simply listen to you, whatever you say also. So you can add, okay, please feel free if you feel like clarifications, if you feel like sharing your faith. Also, I would uh, suggest you sometime also, uh, this must really help us to understand what I have experienced, I need to share with my junior sisters. Your faith encounter becomes so, you know, so touching for others. And that will really uplift there. That's what God wanted us also to do. This is what apostles did. Apostles all the time kept on telling that I'm talking about something that I experienced. This early Christ church communities and church fathers were always people who spoke about their experience of Christ. So, uh, rather than seeking information, transformation into ourselves, going back into ourselves, returning to the source from where yesterday we said Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. And uh, further also you can read the letter that is written to the church of Laodicea. That also really helps you. If you require, use that one also. But then I have given you three or four passages. Use them in your prayer. Continue your prayer. Whenever you feel like uh, uh, you are lo losing or you are distracted, uh, say some ejaculatory prayers, use your rosaries, and then they are all very powerful. And then you see the magic that prayer can create in us. It creates a magic, and then that brings a miracle. The miracle is I myself. Each one of us are miracles for the Lord, for our prayers. And others must see this miracle in us. Thank you.